I got a 325 amp TIG welder in the shop today, and I think the best thing to do here is just quit talking and weld. Okay, are you ready for the unboxing? Just kidding, no unboxing here today. You can easily see what comes with it on my store page. But what we will do is test out the pulse settings as well as a low end start on some box cutter blades. And then we'll switch over to AC on some quarter inch thick aluminum. First up, we're going to do some box cutter blades, and these are roughly 24 thousandths thick. Of course, they taper down to almost nothing. I'm going to use pulse settings, the rule of 33. So what is this rule of 33? Well, I came up with this thing about 10 years ago after doing a lot of experimenting with high-speed pulse settings. It works great for thin metal. It works great for welding on an edge or near an edge. It works great for filling a gap. There are three main pulse settings, pulses per second, pulse width, and background current. We're going to set them all to 33. One of the improvements that PrimeWeld made was they made every knob read out digitally. And that's a big help when you're really trying to dial in something like 33 or one and a half pulses a second. Now there's one more thing I need to do before I weld and that is set the main amperage roughly twice what I would normally need because with pulse settings you get an average of the background and the pulse width. So I'm setting to 48 I'm ready to go. With the low amp start I'm able to put a tack weld on that very corner without nipping the end away too bad. I'm using 1 16th 2% lanthanated sharpened really sharp a number 8 furic clear cup about 20 CFH of argon. I added a few extra dabs of filler metal onto that end so that I could do this. I watch the back of that puddle fuse halfway into that thing and not curl that end under. I'm going to show that again in slow motion in case you didn't pick up on it. I'm watching the rear end of that puddle and watch it start to flow but I start traveling before it gets all the way to the back of that tack. This has been a method that's worked really well for me, especially on crack repair, starting from an end, especially where the weld has to be blended off afterwards and you have to maintain an edge or maintain a dimension. Well, let's take a look at it real time now. When you're welding something thin like this, you want to get that rod in there often. You don't want to step ahead too far each time or you'll blow a hole. 33 pulses a second is high enough that it just is a little flutter. It agitates the puddle. Uh, it's not too annoying to look at. It looks like it's slower than that here on the camera, but that's kind of probably due to frame rate or something like that. All right, let's set up for a quarter inch thick aluminum now. First thing I need to do is just switch over to AC. And then I'm going to set my AC frequency. This is a lot of personal preference here, but I like to go down pretty low for a quarter inch and thicker. So I'm going all the way down to 50. And for AC balance, this machine reads in percent cleaning, so I want to set it at 35 for a good starting point. I find that I get much cleaner arc starts if I use about a full second, maybe even a second and a half of pre-flow. And I'm going to also set my start amperage a little higher because I'll be using a 1 8 electrode. On the box cutter blades, I set the start amperage to 5. I'm going to set it to 20 because I'm going to be using a 1 8 electrode. I set the main amperage wide open at 325, but I'll put a camera on the machine and we'll see what it takes to weld this piece of quarter inch on an outside corner. I mentioned I was using a 1 8 electrode on this. That's 2% lanthanated and it's a tapered tip, a number 6 gas lens, 15 to 20 CFH argon. I'll just be quiet for a minute and let you listen to this arc. Again, this is 50 hertz. I like using lower frequencies on a thick outside corner joint like this. Kind of wraps the corners. Nice wide arc. I'm reading anywhere from 220 to 250 amps here. And here's what I'm running off of. My indoor dryer plug. 30 amp breaker. Along with two, <laughs> two extension cords to get me out to the shop. I don't recommend trying this. I just wanted to see what it would do. I will be taking this machine to another shop that's got a 50 amp breaker and plenty of power. We'll see what it can do on full amperage. I hooked up a water cooler along with a 320 amp 20 style torch for this video. There's a lot of torch options. I'll go over that in future videos. I've also had the chance to work on two or three other videos in the 150 amp range on DC. No surprises there. 
You should be seeing this video come out really soon. It's quarter inch stainless steel, two pass weld. All right, here's my first impressions on the machine, starting with the unboxing that didn't happen. I will say this about the packaging. That, that machine is packed better than probably any machine I've ever received. Uh, two things about the machine that I'd probably change if I could. Uh, I like, personally, I like to have an upslope and downslope on 2T and 4T. This machine on the 2T function is just an on-off switch. The other thing is the fan is a little loud. I'm gonna be putting some time on it. In fact, I'm gonna do more videos on this on, on some things that I can see on how to get the most out of this machine. Kind of a little mini series. The 325 is available by itself with machine only where you can order your torch separately and order your water cooler separately or we have it bundled with a water cooled TIG torch and a kit. Stay tuned for more.